All right, so once you have all of your selection channels done, uh, you can begin to fill those. So I usually fill mine with one solid color um, for every single thing, and then I um, will use the layer styles to apply a pattern afterwards. So we can start with um, the concrete paths. I'm gonna go back to my selection and grab the paths. And I'm gonna create um, a new fill layer. I've started a, a folder called fills WC, that stands for fills watercolor. And I'm gonna start a new layer and I'm gonna call it F concrete. And then I'm going to go edit fill and give it a fill of 50% gray. So now all of the paths are filled and I can apply a texture over top if I want. But I'm just gonna go through and do all of my fill layers so that everything has a fill of 50% gray. Um, so go ahead and create all of the layers that you need. I, for example, have different types of seating, logs, bollards, rocks, because I have rocks in my plan, a play surface, a lawn, um, border planting, understory planting, accent planting, and a couple types of decks. So go ahead and um, fill your selections with gray, just like this. Create a new layer, so make your selection, and fill it with 50% gray. And we will continue um, once that's finished. Okay, so all of my areas are filled now. Um, I'll just show you what it looks like with all the layers turned on. Basically, everything is filled with the same fill layer. It's all 50% gray. And that's so that if we ever need to add or remove something later, it's really, really easy to do that because we always know what color it's filled with. If you fill them with all different colors, um, it'll be hard to keep track of them if you want to paint in or erase out later. So I recommend just using one color. So I'm going to turn all of these off except for the lawn, which is where we'll start with applying our textures. So we've created some seamless uh, watercolor textures in the previous video. And now I want to show you how you can apply that. So I'm just going to zoom in by doing control one, which takes me to 100%. And I'm going to uh, highlight lawn and then just double click the layer to bring up the layer styles palette. And over here, I'm going to go to pattern overlay. This will just bring up the most recent pattern that I've used. And I'm just gonna go down here where I've saved all of the different patterns that we created and select this green watercolor texture here. So maybe I'll scale it up just a little bit um, like this. And I'll press okay. And then um, I don't want it to stand out too much, so I'm just going to give it a little bit less opacity, maybe 85%. I'm going to go to the play surface next over here. And with this one, it's filled with a gray color, and I'm just going to double click on this. And instead of doing a pattern, um, I'm going to do a color overlay first. So I'm going to choose a color that I know is part of my, uh, my general color scheme, which is kind of a, a bluish green color like this. And I'm also going to give it a pattern overlay, um, but I'm going to choose a different type of pattern. So I'm going to use one of the ones that we had from last semester in your uh, patterns palette. If you haven't loaded this, you'll have to go back to a previous video to remember how to uh, recall those. Um, so I'm going to give it this concrete texture and I'll just temporarily turn that off so I can see the impact. So I'm going to reduce the scale to 20 maybe even less, maybe um, 10, just to give it a ground texture. And I will uh, make my color overlay maybe 65% so that I can still see a little bit through it onto the texture below. I can also try a few different blend modes if I want to uh, see what those look like. Maybe I'll take the multiply like this. So now I have my play surface set. But I think what we're all really interested in is learning how to use those seamless textures that we created from our watercolor palettes. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the border planting layer here. And I will double click to add a layer style, go to the pattern overlay. 
and I'm going to select one of the palettes that we uh, created. So I'm going to choose this one. I'll just move this box over to the side so I can see the majority of the planting. Um, I'm going to rescale it down to 90, which is um, which is uh, oriented north. And the palette that I had created was on a diagonal, so it kind of leads to a nice diagonal when I orient it um, true north. And because we created a seamless pattern, you don't really detect any uh, tiling of this pattern. So this is really nice, and this is the the specific texture I made with the sort of border planting in mind, and I'm just gonna keep it at this scale of 10%, which, um, which looks fairly good. So already you can see how just by creating one watercolor pattern um, and making sure that it is seamless and defining it as a pattern in Photoshop, how you can create your own customized analog watercolor plans in Photoshop. So I'm going to keep going with some of the other planting areas and see what I can come up with. And now I'm going to go ahead and do some of my material textures, for example, the decks, the concrete, the paving, etc. And remember, you can always copy and paste a layer style just by right clicking on any of the layers that have a layer style applied and going copy layer style. And then you can right click on the layer you want to copy it to and go paste layer style. And that will just copy the entire um, settings from the previous. So with this one, it's a, it's a deck that's raised above. So I want the same pattern and scale, but I'm just gonna double click and change the, um, the angle. I'm also going to give this one a drop shadow just so it has a little bit of an edge. So that basically takes care of all of the fills that I need to do on my plan. And now um, the next step would be to add in the trees and the tree canopy. Um, now, if you zoom in, you'll see that there are some overlaps of line work. So probably what I would do is put a um, layer mask on my line work layer. And then I would just select the things that I want to cut out of the line work. So for example, all of these, these seating elements I could just control click those layers and um, shift control click to add the next one. And then I can just um, delete those from my line work on the layer mask. So you'll probably wanna go in and do a little bit of shading. Um, this is really a conceptual planting plan, uh, but this would work and you can begin to pull apart the different layers as well. If you wanted to just do a materials plan, you could turn off all of the planting layers, turn my architectural line work and context line work back on. Now this is useful as a materials layout plan, showing me just the hardscape and um, seating elements on the site plan. And then similarly, I could select the opposite of that, select all the planting layers and turn off all of the material layers. 
And now I have a planting diagrammatic outline. Um, so you can always uh, easily create a little legend of materials. And uh, you could do that just by creating little square selections on the side of each layer. So um, if I want to create a lawn legend material, I could just go here, make sure I'm on the lawn layer, go edit, fill 50% gray, and it will automatically fill it with the exact same layer style that the rest of the layer is on. So I can um, take this selection box, move down. I'm still on my rectangular marquee, so as long as I'm within the selection, I can just move it around freely. Now I can go to my border planting, fill with 50% gray, and it fills it with the, pat, the uh, hatch for that. Um, so you can just keep going down and creating your little legend off to the side here just by making sure you're on the layer that the layer style is applied to and filling the layer like that. Okay, so in the next video, I'm going to try to show you guys some methods for doing trees. And I will hopefully try to post that tomorrow.